friends, family, everyone who enjoys retro junkie videos. Today I present to you PlayStation. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have much luck with this one. So it's more just a pull apart, tear down, have a look inside video. So compared to the Xbox 360, which I did at the same, same sort of time period, same weekend, I found the PlayStation 3 a marvel to work on. Sony really got it right this time. Apparently the PlayStation 2 Slims had some problems because they were so compact. Now, I'm not sure what the current PlayStation Slims are like, because there's apparently two different models of Slim. But let me tell you, the PlayStation 3, beautiful, fantastic, loved working on it. So, there go the heat sink clamps, uh, lots of screws, taking out the power supply and the uh, Blu-ray drive hard drive and Wi-Fi board. That fan is massive. So you get these little pads that stick, they uh, help transfer heat. Appropriately named heat pads by the way. But the fan is massive in this thing. Anyway, uh, it uses a regular CR or BR2032 battery. It's the device profile there to clean it. The thermal paste wasn't uh, as bad as on the um, Xbox, much easier to remove. There's the old reality synthesizer. Very nice looking chip. The um, heat spreaders on top. And there's the uh, cell broadband engine. Which is another beautiful chip, a bit harder to read than the uh, RSX. And there's some other chips. There's the battery. Now, I did use foil for this attempt. Uh, the problem was no video. Uh, yellow light of death, of course. So, a bit of flux down. Flux is very bad for you. Now, what happened here is um, we sped up either 20 or 8 times, so it's quite faster than it was. The ceramic chips on board have no problem hitting their target temperatures. Uh, but the actual uh, chips, because of the heat spreaders, they disperse heat so quickly that it was very difficult to get them up to an appropriate heat, or at least to measure it. Measuring the heat sinks directly was only giving me about 50 or 60 degrees. So whether that's because the heat gun does not like that type of metal to read off, I don't know. But yeah, it took a while to get them nice and hot. And there you go, that's pretty hot bit too hot. I think we were running between uh, 350 and 400 on this one. I've noticed that uh, if you don't do that you get stuck around the 180 mark, which isn't enough. Uh, that's degree Celsius for all you folk out there. So as you can see, you heat, you heat. The foil is about six layers thick. should deflect a lot of um, misplaced heat. No, I forgot to slow down that temperature reading, but this one I got. 132. So it cools down pretty quickly. And we do the same on the other side of the board. There's some more chips. And that's why you keep that little cutout, just so you can... Oh, no, the heat just seems to flow under the board anyway. But as you can see, the ceramic chips heat up no problem. So much worse at dispersing heat. So that's how that bit worked. That one, and we got that one up to 237. So the goal is uh, 217 for these, which is the uh, melting point of tin solder. And then we apply thermal paste. Now this thermal paste was awful. I never usually use a card, which is why I'm so bad at this, to spread uh, heat paste. Usually you rely on the force of whatever is pushing down on it. But the guide was very clear to do that, and as a result I got it all down the side, on the, uh, that chip on the left. But you can clean it up pretty well with a um, cotton tip, or Q-tip, whatever you call them. There's the uh, copper shims. If you do get fingerprints on them, make sure you clean it up with some uh, isopropyl or uh, methylated spirits if you're in the land of Oz. And I've got uh, paste everywhere. 
It was really bad stuff. It was very soft, very, very soft. So it uh, got on everything and it was shiny. It was like someone had put body glitter in it or something. I don't know if any of you out there are women and use um, body glitter, but I believe it's a pretty cool thing at the dance clubs these days. Although I did notice there was some body wash which had body glitter in it. I don't know why you'd want that in body wash, but that's how it was. So, you know, I'm not one to judge. That toothbrush cost a dollar. Coles has very cheap toothbrushes. That's our, one of our big supermarkets over here. So these ones, because we're relying on pressure, it's coming straight down, so I'll put the battery back in, of course. Put the board back in, nice and flush. Don't want it moving about too much, or there'll be thermal paste everywhere. <laughs> uh, what was next? I guess we just put all the shielding back on. Shielding slash heat sinks. Make sure the little uh, yeah, heat pads don't fall off. Uh, they get a lot of dust on them and they lose their adhesiveness quite easily. You gotta be careful, there's that fan again. Look at that, that is massive. I don't know why I focused on that screw there for a second, cannot remember. It was quite late when I did this. So, continually dust it down. Um, in between the cuts I was, um, I gave it a very good clean. It's possibly the cleanest PlayStation 3 original in the world at the moment. Unfortunately it doesn't work though. The hard drive slots back in. Mine was a Seagate, 40 gig. Secure some more screws. Careful of that antenna cable, you don't want to lose that. Very good design. Now, what are we doing? Ah, so the uh, heat sink clamps you can bend slightly so they apply more pressure on the middle when you screw them in. So do a little bit on each side and sort of secure it on both sides evenly so that it doesn't you know, snap the chip in half. I suppose that's what would happen. And then pop in the uh, Bluetooth wireless cardboard. I would imagine it's got regular Wi-Fi on it as well. PlayStation 3 has that, doesn't it? I wouldn't know, mine doesn't work. <laughs> took about, I'd say it took about an hour and a half to do all this, uh, off the top of my head. It's quite a while. So we got the power supply back in. Had a look in there as well, uh, it was a little bit dusty, but no visibly damaged components. What the heck was that? Make the Blu-ray drive. Top casing goes back on. About six or seven screws. There's a very short, or shorter one in the top right hand corner. Slide that on and one securing screw. And we're done. As you can see there, the problem is still present. Now, I did discover though, Green, yellow, red, blinking. Turn it off. If you switch your PlayStation 3 off at the uh, switch at the back, and then hold down the eject button like so, and then flick the switch. It's very hard to do this with one hand. The fans will ramp up. Have a look. But unfortunately for me, there was still no video, so that wasn't much use. <laughs> but it is a good way to clean out your fans. Uh, if you've got a lot of loose dust in there, spinning them up should uh, set it free, really. Though, to be honest, given the size of the fan, the dust didn't have a chance. It's only use now is a leaf blower. 
We lost this battle, I'm afraid, but the war isn't over. We can't save them all. Rest in peace, 02-274303672. 245-2398-CECH, whatever it was. Thanks for watching. Have a subscription. Go!